welcome to another bolt action tutorial folks this time we're going to be painting some soviets these are from the uh, mortar blister though you'll also get to see the um, completed heavy machine gun uh, blister too I got them as part of the um, uh, the support pack the big box set and you'll be seeing the other characters from that being painted in another video so the uniform color we're using um, and for most of it we're going to be using three colours. You'll see everything has a, an undercoat of, in this case, German Camo Black Brown. That forms our deepest shade colour. And then I'm applying a coat all over um, of US Field Drab. And I am leaving some German Camo Dark Brown in the deepest recesses to define uh, the areas between, um, between parts of the uniform, between wrists and cuffs necks and collars, uh, uniforms and uh, bags and the deepest creases on the uniform itself. The trick at this stage is to always make sure you're applying over two coats and not to leave too much shade colour, especially in what I call internal shade colour with, you know, within each area um, of the uniform. It's got to make sense and not be too dominating, uh, otherwise the finished result will look too dark. Now you can see here I'm following the hem on the tunic and then I'm painting lines. I do a lot of the painting by lines folks. I uh, put the lines on and then kind of fill in um, around the lines so you can see those really dark creases and then I'm giving the, the main colour which is Panzer Aces Old Wood. I'm following the, the map that's been created by the initial shade coat. That's the shade coat of US Field Drab. And then I'm just working around. Once again you may on the larger areas have to apply two coats so please be patient. And remember semi-opaque areas quite often make a good transition. It's unlikely that you'll get that on the, the smaller um, uh, folds you can see on the arm the creases on the arm but you can do it on the larger areas and you can see once again making lines and then joining the lines up so to speak so that um, you've got a, a nice solid coat of colour and then Iraqi sand for the final highlight this is where you have to be very careful not put too much on and you'll notice I'm putting it where I can on hems and seams but above shading where at all possible because Typically a fold will, will receive a bit of light on the top and then shading underneath and then it'll be lighter again um, underneath the shade. At all points you've got to make sure the paint is flowing nicely off the brush. If your brush is too dry, the paint's too clumpy, it won't flow and that's particularly important at this final highlight stage. You have to draw nice neat lines exactly where you want them to be. Now on the trousers I didn't put a coat of old wood, I just left that shade colour of US Field Drab and I've gone straight to Iraqi Sand for a highlight. And there without using different colours and just taking a slightly different approach we can get a different look but it still looks right. It just um, looks perhaps more dirty and more worn but it's still the right kind of colour for the uniform. Now the rolled up great coat, we're going to be using flat earth as the main colour for this and once again US uh, field drab as a highlight colour. Now you've got to see the detail in this, it can be a little bit tricky but don't forget you can also leave a few extra creases by not painting over the entire surface. Two coats will be required again folks. As I said, you can leave some extra creases by just having little slithers of German Camel black brown being evident. And then a careful highlight. Don't go too heavy, don't put too much on, otherwise it's going to look much more pale than you want it to. Pick out the edges, highlight the creases, and it will stand out nicely against that paler uniform. Now we're on to webbing, belts, bags, things like that. And we're going to start by giving a shade colour of Panzer Aces Track Primer. We don't want to leave 
any really dark internal shade uh, for these areas because it's a very light um, finish we're after. The main coat of paint will be green grey and the highlight will be Panzerace's Splinter Camouflage Base. So I'm just filling in to start with with the track primer, leaving a bit of the German Camo Black Brown um, at the outer edges of it so it's framed nicely against the other areas of the figure. And then green grey, I'll apply that. As you can see it's going on quite stripy once again so I'm creating folds, creating depth and leaving a little bit of the track primer um, showing. If it takes two coats folks, once again just let it take two coats. Don't try and do all of these larger areas in a winner. Smaller areas you can get away with it, but larger areas patience is required. Just go around once and then again. And also you just got to find all those various little bits of that material that are hiding all over the figure. Sometimes you won't really notice them until you start painting. And then Splinter Camo base uh, from Panzer Aces again. It's a very bright colour, it's almost off-white, so apply it sparingly in the same way as we did with the uniform to accentuate highlights and shading. I'm painting the officer's map case with um, main colour being leather brown. I can leave the German camel black brown in place as a shade here because it's, it's a nice complementary shade for the leather brown. And just picking out all the little detail strapping and flap and edges and such like and then highlighting with orange brown. It's a very strong highlight. It gives a sort of worn leather, leathery edge kind of look, but you have to be careful that you don't put too much on. And it's also a good colour to highlight on this figure because it's a strong contrast to the background colour of the uniform. If you use a highlight that's too close to the main colour, it's just going to confuse the eye and it's not going to make the object pop as much from the background. The boots and metallic areas have been given an undercoat of black. The German Camel Black Brown will not work as um, a shade for grey. So I'm putting on German grey on the boots and on the metal areas of the gun. And it's just picking out the raised areas on the boots, the, um, the component areas of the gun. And you can also see the, um, the hat, uh, the headband on the hat as well, because that's going to be basically black. You see me just working around, leaving a bit of black in as required to create the shade between those components. The boots will not get any more of a highlight but I'm going to use London Grey to highlight the other areas. It'll really help define the shape of the gun and you know the gun is basically a very very dark metal object. Um, it's not got a lot going on so this will help the individual shapes within it just catch the eye and just help confirm what we're seeing. This is a really strong highlight though, so take care you don't overdo it. It's really just to be a bit of a glint coming off the gun on the worn edges. And then remember buckles, buttons and such like folks get them done as well. This. The red areas on the figure, including the shoulder boards, I've used burnt cadmium red, red, that's 70947, and scarlet, and just built it up. Though you can see the areas I'm building up on are really quite small, um, so you just have to Use a very very fine point on your brush and just make sure that you, as I said before, have paint that is flowing nicely off the brush and not dragging off the brush and then you can get a really strong distinct thin line. And that just catches the eye, catches the light and helps confirm the shape without dominating, uh, without dominating too much. You don't want to overplay these details but they're hard to see. Then we're back to the uniform colours for painting the rest of the hat. Here I want it to look as though there's a, a skull, you know, like in the middle there uh, with the hat sunk, sunk around it. So I've just left a bit of the shade, the uh, Jimmy Camel Black Brown shade on the outside. And you can see the shoulder boards there as well, folks. I don't know, some shoulder boards may have the uniform colour in the middle. I've just left them black with a little bit of German grey, but they may be um, 
uh, the basic uniform colour in there too. Oh, apologies for going off shot there, folks. But you can see how putting a bit of time into the hat can really make it stand out and make this figure clear on the battlefield of what his role is and his difference from the rest of the team. Going to hand over to Mrs Panzerschule now. She uses a magnifier, so we're going to view it uh, this way. Be quite good in as much as you'll be able to see how she moves the figure around to um, to get the right approach uh, of the brush that is to the figure. If you can get the brush flowing in a comfortable control direction, you're going to get a much better, neater result. So this is a very large area, um, a, a great coat. You know, it's it's not a small uh, part of the figure. It's going to take a few coats to get there. There's an opportunity as well to leave semi-opaque areas when you're doing this. So the second coat, for instance, you don't have to cover every area that the um, the first coat covered. And here you've got to look for shades in the sculpt. Some areas will be easier to see than others. It's quite hard sometimes to spot it on a dark background, but you'll get that with experience. Things like cuffs, got to pick out the cuffs, any seam lines on the cuffs or otherwise, hem lines as well. And as you can see, she's painting lines and then drawing it all together. So if you, if you place your brush on the object or the area you want to paint and then draw the brush and repeat and then fill in around where you, you don't want any of that shade colour um, remaining, then you get a really accurate, result, accurate result. So place the brush and then draw the brush as opposed to try to just draw the brush across the figure. If you're painting a little um, fold on a coat or a jacket, place a brush, draw it, and that way you're going to be right on the money. And also, this this was a bit tricky figuring out what was what in here, but the um, the backpack has straps go across the chest, so sometimes this only really becomes clear once you start to paint. And as you can see, that's had a couple of coats now. It's looking good, looking solid. And then we're going in again with US Field Drab, so that's um, flat earth for the base colour, US field drab for the highlight colour and you can see how small the lines are that are going on there. Placing it above the shade, next to um, seams. And it's really starting to pop, getting a lot of depth there with just two coats of paint. And that's the, the beauty of this technique. It's not a wonderful blending technique, but you know, we're only painting wargaming figures here folks and we've got hundreds to do. This is a great way of getting great results. It's going to look good at tabletop distance as well as, as you can see here, as well as close up. And as I've said in other videos, Mrs. Panzerschuller, she's not a wargamer. She doesn't have years and years of painting experience. I've shown her how we do this in a very short time. So it is an achievable, um, an achievable technique for people to learn if they like the finished look. You can see how that's brightening up really nicely. The shade colour is jumping out strongly but still subtly. And then we're painting the, the bags here for uh, the ammunition pouches. Taking the same approach as the officer's map case. Just as then, you've got to be careful on that highlight. If you put it on too much, it's going to look orange as opposed to a highlighted brown colour. It will look orange. Put it on, you've got to put it on nice and accurate too. It doesn't look good as a soft, wet paint, that orange. Back to the officer, I've used German Camel Pale Brown and Old Wood on the butt of the submachine gun. Any similar colours will do. Eyes, folks, you know, we all love painting eyes. I use an off-white colour, sometimes I'll use deck tan, for instance, and I paint it before I paint the rest of the face so that I can correct any mistakes by using the German Camel Pale Brown at the same time as I am uh, drawing a line down through the eye uh, to make the pupil. Now here I'm using uh, Saddle Brown, 
as the shade colour for the skin. The main colour is um, Game Colour Sunny Flesh Tone. Just double check that. Sorry, folks. Sorry, Bronze Flesh Tone with a highlight of Flat Flesh. And when you're painting faces and painting hands, just remember the anatomy. You know, so you're, you're going to accentuate that anatomy. You're going to be picking out brows, nose, lips, chin, cheekbones, knuckles. And if you work up to that, you know, to the highest points, through those layers of paint and eventual highlight, if you work up through there, using less each time, you'll get a nice contrasting um, set of colours that the eye will recognise as a face uh, with, with um, great ease. You don't want to be confusing the eye. You want to be getting the paint on in a way that the eye goes, I know what that is. And we're very good at recognising faces, so just follow your own instincts. And then you can see the final highlight going on. Once again, stick it on the raised areas where the light's going to hit. For instance, under the eye. It might sound a bit daft, but underneath the eye, tip of the nose, chin, top of the cheekbones, knuckles, um, and perhaps the end of fingertips uh, too. And then you get a really nice, bright finish that's got a bit of depth to it as well. And that depth from the saddle brown is a little bit reddish, a little bit purplish. So that's a nice uh, shade colour. Lastly, the hair, I mean, you can put just about whatever colour you want here, folks. Uh, I'm using Timmy Camel, pale brown and um, orange brown. Just use whatever takes your fancy, whatever looks right for you and mix it up a bit, keep it looking varied, um, especially for any character figures. Let's take a look at the finished teams. So, there's the mortar team first of all. The figure here, the loader, I've not shown the painting of him but He's been painted in the same way as the officer, though you can see I've given a sort of blonde colour here. The mortar I've just painted in the same way as I painted the gun, though I gave it a, an intermediate coat of dark grey actually, over the German grey, so it's not quite so dark. He's also got a canvas bag rather than a leather bag, but otherwise the same approach. And as you can see, it's a very nice, bright, well detailed um, looking base. Now, the mortar, by the way, and the uh, um, helmet, I'll just check my paints here. I used a shade colour of German Camo Dark Green, then uh, Camouflage Olive Green, then Medium Green. Apply that in a layered effect in the same way as I've done with the, um, the uniforms. Now let's have a look at the heavy machine gun. So the main difference here is I have used a different colour on the padded tunics. That was Russian Tank Crew 2 from Panzer Races. And the highlight colour for that was green grey. And that's a nice distinction between the two different kinds of uniform given with different colours as well. Sort of a summer camo. And then the bases, I have used Vallejo Earth effects with some pigments. The remains of the trees are just dry twigs gathered, gathered down from outside the house. Um, I can see the tree as I'm talking that um, they came from, just let them dry and then just plonked them straight down onto the earth effects as I, I it was drying. And then just some grass, um, which is a mixture of flock and static grass a bit of a um, sort of step type look, so nothing too bright. 
So there you go, folks. Just get them back in shot. Two nice support teams for your Soviets. I'll be adding to the collection and doing more tutorials. Next up, I've got some command figures. It's a medic. Radio operator, and then this sort of classic uh, picture from a propaganda um, poster, you know, urging the men on. So they'll be next in terms of tutorials for bolt action. I hope you enjoyed that, folks. Hope you like the look. Hope you find it interesting technique. If I've missed anything out in terms of colours or any steps, stick it down in the description. If you've got any questions, stick it in the description as well. And if you like this, please like, subscribe, share, do all the good things that helps me build the channel and keep these uh, videos coming for you guys. So thanks for watching.